She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Hi, I'm Danny Johnson. Welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. Hey, what's the point of success? And what is it really all for? That's a question that's kind of been going through my head quite a bit the last couple of months. What is it all about? What is it really for? What's the purpose for it? What's your purpose for it? Listen, if you've been watching The Danny Johnson Show, you know, and especially, I mean, we've been here for nine years. The show has been airing for nine straight years, going on its 10th right now. And um, yeah, no, yeah, like think about it. If you've had anything to do with DannyJohnson.com, you know that I was homeless at 21. I grew up in a violently abusive, drug-infested home. I was pregnant at 17. I had my first marriage failure at 21. Almost had a second marriage failure a couple of times. Lots of business failures. I started a business from the trunk of my car in a payphone booth, and within two years, I became a millionaire. It isn't because the million dollars fell from the sky. It's because I built a business. And I actually built a part-time business, believe it or not. I built it part-time because I refused to have my life owned by money and I refused to have my my world owned by a business. And so I just worked diligently, very part-time, and the kind of money that I made was what it was. And I've been teaching other people how to do the same for 27 years. But here's here's the point. Through the journey of success, you have different motivations. And the motivations is kind of what gets you out of bed. You know, in the beginning when you're broke, you know, you just want to make more money, right? That's it. Like, you just want to make more money. I never, ever imagined that I would ever, ever make a million bucks, let alone tens of millions of dollars throughout all of these years. Never, never, ever, ever thought that that would ever happen. It wasn't on my list of things to do. It wasn't necessarily my goal, my passion, my dream. It wasn't any of those things. But I will tell you that when I was homeless, it was, I will never return to broke like this again. I didn't ever want to be broke again. It, it was such a horrible suffering. It was so humiliating. It was terrifying. It was embarrassing. And I felt like such a failure. You know what I mean? Like when you feel so bad about yourself and when, like for me, my my life kind of was defined by money. It was defined by, and I didn't even make a lot of money, right? But it was defined by me not being like the family I had come from. And here I was exactly like all of it, right? I'm homeless. I'm doing drugs. I'm sleeping around with way too many people. Uh, you know, I have a $35,000 in debt. I'm living in the back of my car. I mean, I was worse than so many of, um, you know, my, my parents, for example, that I just, I just didn't want to be like that. And here I became that. And sadly, it was a deep suffering, a suffering that made me almost take my own life. And the question of after you've become successful and after you've made a bunch of money, now it is like, what is this really all about, man? Like, what, what is this really all for? And so that's the question I have for you. You're working hard towards something. Are you working hard towards paying off debt or building your dream home, traveling in the world? Or is it just paying your bills, like just making it month to month. Why do you want to succeed? What is it for? I started to study successful people 30 years ago. I learned that, and it wasn't like a thought that entered my hair, like my head, like, oh, you know, I thought this by myself. No, I actually heard a successful millionaire say that if you want to be successful financially, you have to learn from people who are successfully, who are successful financially. That made a lot of sense, right? If I want to learn how to sew clothes, I'm going to learn from somebody who knows how to sew clothes, right? If you want to learn how to, how to, um, I don't know, uh, build something, you learn from somebody else who's already built it. Kind of like today, I love what's on the internet, right? The do-it-yourself, D-I-Y, where there's, you know, you could D-Y-I anything, just about anything. But you're learning from somebody else who's already done it. And so... Same with becoming financially independent. I started to learn from those kinds of people. Millionaires, billionaires, you begin to study their lives. You begin to kind of uncover and unpack like what motivated them? What, how did they think? Like what were the challenges they went through? How many times did they fail? 
Well, a story recently that I had the chance to like really like almost experience as I was in Pennsylvania last year. And it was a story that I had no idea about yet I was a customer of their products. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be salivating all the way through today's show <laughs> because we're going to be talking about chocolate. <laughs> and I am actually not a chocolate fan, but there is one chocolate that <sighs> my husband's a big chocolate fan. There's always chocolate in our house, but there's this one chocolate that when he buys this one chocolate, I am defenseless and I'm not a chocolate fan, but this one chocolate, whenever I see that dark brown wrapper with that beautiful silver thin aluminum foil wrapped around the edges. I have chills just thinking about it right now. I'm such a goo fan. And with those beautiful silver letters across the top of this little chocolate bar, you know, that's like, I don't know, six inches by two inches. I'm sorry. Please excuse me if I end up drooling. And I do have chills. I have chicken skin on my arms right now. Hershey's chocolate bars. You see, I've been a customer of Hershey's Kisses and Hershey's chocolate bars for a really long, you know, my whole life probably, right? Our whole lives we've grown up eating this chocolate, right? But I never knew the story that was behind it. And here's this outrageously successful man who was driven for success, not for himself. In fact, he lived very frugally under the standards of his time and the rest of the millionaires that were created in the early 1900s, how they lived a very lavish, very lavish, lavish, lavish life. But here, Milton Hershey and his beautiful wife who could have no children, they never had a single child and they decided to take on orphan American children and create homes for them. When I was at their plant and at their facility, listen, he built an entire city, friends. An entire city he built. Meaning he went to Dairy Church, Pennsylvania, where there was nothing. And he wanted to make milk chocolate. He had tasted the chocolate from England, which still to this day is some of the best chocolate in the world. So when he had their chocolate, he actually was a caramel maker and he had several business failures, several. He just couldn't quite figure it out. And he, whether he had machine challenges or he had the mixing challenges. And, and so he, had a, he then eventually built a very successful caramel business. And when he had gone to England and he was wanting to sell his caramel to their chocolate and create you know, a caramel and chocolate. Oh my gosh, the caramel, me and caramel. We are very close intimate friends. We should never do a show about food because here it is again. I don't know why this happens, but I have chicken skin all over again just thinking about caramel with chocolate. Have you ever had a caramello? You know, I shouldn't be telling you this. Please do not send me any Hershey bars and please don't send me any caramel. I beg you, please do not send me any of this. Those of you who love giving gifts, don't. But you could instead, you could instead if you feel compelled to buy me chocolate, please take the money you would have spent in chocolate and send it to King's Ransom. Don't send the chocolate to King's Ransom because they'll end up giving it to me. But please just like send that $3 to King's Ransom instead and let's build some homes for the extreme poor instead. That would be a much better idea. But back to Milton Hershey. Oh my gosh. I had the opportunity to go and see the house that he and his wife lived in. And it was very modest, especially in millionaire standards, especially during the time of the Vanderbilts and the Rockefellers and all those guys that lived this opulent, huge amounts of wealth that they like showed everybody. But instead, the Hershey's, they live like right in town. He actually built this town. And the town actually uh, asked the, the, the town to rename this town, which was Dairy Church, Pennsylvania, to Hershey, Pennsylvania. Everything this man built was so remarkable. You see, your success doesn't have to be about all your stuff. You know, there's some people, they don't want to become successful because they actually don't want to manage it all. They don't want to manage all the junk that, and all the pressure. It's like, okay, well, if you make a lot of money, then you're supposed to drive this kind of a car and you're supposed to live in this kind of a house. You're supposed to have this kind of furniture. You're supposed to wear these kind of clothes. I'm here to tell you that is so not true. 
That is so not true. I am telling you, I have met several millionaires and a, um, had the chance to observe a billionaire as my husband and I did a real estate deal with him. My husband spent quite a bit of time with him and he was super casual. Like really casual, like a you know messed up hat that's like frayed and duct tape duct tape on his shoes and holes in his shirt and do you know what I'm saying? Like just just simple, like super simple. And so Milton Hershey, there was no services in Hershey, Pennsylvania. None. There was nothing. There wasn't you know convenience stores. Um, there wasn't real estate opportunities. It was just nothing but cow fields everywhere. And the reason why he started there is because he needed the milk. And he began to buy up some farms um, and he began to build the town. He literally built the whole town of what is now called today Hershey, Pennsylvania. And you know that 78% of the profits go straight to taking care of orphans. And when I was there last year, 2017 orphans were being fed, clothed, and housed and educated. And I'm telling you, education like you could not imagine. So in his case, what is my success for? was for the orphans and for American orphans. They have had tens of thousands of kids since he started this go through that school and go through these housing programs. And so check it out. They built these big, beautiful homes, big, beautiful homes where there are, it's a family of 12. So it's a mom and dad who either have children of their own, maybe a couple of them, and they take care of 12 other children. So it's 14 people that live inside this home and they're gorgeous homes. And it's neighborhood after neighborhood that is all of these same kids. So it's it's a f- neighborhoods filled with beautiful brand new homes with manicured lawns. Everything is gorgeous. Everything is upscale. And so all these kids are growing up around each other. And then there's 2017 of them that are in school together. So all of the, all of the, um, facilities and all of the um, services inside of the town are ran for the orphans. Like, come on, think about this. Like, what a crazy vision and crazy dream. And the man has been dead for a really, really long time. And yet every single time you buy a chocolate bar, 78% of it is taking care of orphans. The other smaller percent is actually going to the shareholders, right? The people who, the stakeholders who actually run the companies, the multiple companies. He actually built an amusement park, theaters, um, stadiums. Do you understand? And they continue, and a hospital, like one of the best hospitals in the United States is right there in Pennsylvania, by the way, who former orphans who went to college and became doctors are now the doctors for the new orphans. I mean, think about this. Think about an entire city of orphans. When you visit the Hershey Hotel, which by the way, was built in the thirties, right during the time of the great depression, where everyone was telling him, this is the wrong time. You shouldn't be building right now. You know, it's not, everything is scarce. He's like, this is the best time I can get. I can get supplies that are cheaper. So he built this luxurious five-star hotel in a time where no one else was building. And this hotel is still there today. Okay. It's gorgeous. They get tons of tours and people come to tour the plant. They come to tour like the amusement park and all of the wonderful services that are around Hershey, Pennsylvania. And listen, I was served by kids that were orphans in the hotel, in the restaurant, the servers who were awesome and excellent were orphans who had been privileged to work there and to be educated. The education friend, I'm telling you, you would look at, even if you're homeschooling your kid, you would look at, you would feel like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. You would almost like consider like turning your kid into an orphan so they could get the kind of just regular, I mean, the, the uh, you know, kindergarten through 12th grade education. Like there's not a school that I know of in America that does this kind of schooling. It's all customized. These kids get certified. They all get to go through some kind of trade school during their high school years. They all, by the way, are also given the opportunity to learn how to drive. They're literally treated as family. They go on a vacation together as a family. Isn't that crazy? So what is your success for? That's the question I have. And I want you to, I, I want you to use this Milton Hershey story. And again, I'm totally abbreviating everything. I, I challenge you to look into it, look into it and see, wow, this is what a human being thought to do with their success. So just because you have the ability to make money doesn't mean that it just has to go to building your like stuff, because maybe you're that person that you don't want to manage all that stuff. 
but maybe you want something that's a bit more purposed. Look at this, other examples like Tom's, okay, Warby Parker, same model, buy a pair of glasses, give a pair to someone who can't afford them. Um, love your melon, hats that help children fighting cancer. So several of these organizations have been using their talent and their skill, their idea, and they've used their success to help other people who are actually in need. So here's what I wanna ask you. What are you gonna do with your success? You see, if your vision is only about you, sometimes it can be really hard to get out of bed for that. Sometimes there's something, and this is what I found for me, when my goal was just about money, it's like, wow, you know, you get bored with it after a while. You just, you kind of lose the steam for it. You're like, it's harder to pick up the phone. It's harder to make those decisions. But when you have a vision that's bigger than just your own success, and let's say that you, you, you set a goal that, okay, out of every $10 I make, I'm going to set $1 aside to put it to really good purpose, something that is really meaningful for me. And so maybe what could be meaningful for you is dogs and cats or whales or dolphins. Or maybe it's trees. Maybe it's the environment. Maybe it's $1 every 10 that cancer is something you're really passionate about and you're wanting research to be done about that. And or maybe it's children, right? Maybe it's children who are suffering from lupus or, or whatever disease it is that they're suffering from. And these hospitals that have been put together to help families be able to fight that battle for their child's life. So so if you just just entertain me for a minute. That if making money is something that's just not motivating to you. If using your life to just work for stuff is just like you're just kind of done with it and, and you feel like you're lacking vision, you feel like you're lacking like stimulation and passion and and you're lacking even hope. Actually, let me just say this. Let's go beyond motivation. You're lacking inspiration. Wow. There's there's very few things that are more powerful than inspiration. I'm having that revelation even right now. You see, motivation is one thing. The motivation is what causes you to take action. But inspiration is behind motivation. And when we've been inspired, it's when you get that feeling inside of you where something is opening up really, really big. And, and it's almost like you get chills and you get this crazy, like, what? This big aha moment. So what if by chance that the reason why you're having self-motivation issues, and maybe if by chance, even that you might be a little bit depressed, maybe even by chance that, that you're just feeling the grind, the grind of life, and it just keeps grinding and grinding, and you're just like, oh, I just, oh, you know, I just, oh, I just feel dry, and I just feel like I can't do it anymore. If that's you, friend, I want you to think about this. What if your life was connected to something much bigger than houses and cars and boats and stuff and other people's dreams? What if your life was connected to something bigger like it was for Milton Hershey? What it, or like the Tom's organization or the cover your melon, whatever that was. Listen, listen, what, what if, what if? Think, come on, just come with me. Because if you're lacking inspiration, which there's no feeling like inspiration, there's no feeling like, oh my gosh, there's something bigger for me. There's more out there. This is what I'm supposed to do. That moment where every all the fog clears up and you feel that just direct connection even to the spirit of the living God, right? That, whoa, where everything kind of stops and you begin to see clearly. Test this out with me. Could it be because you've been given the ability to work and could it be that that ability is to be used, yes, for your normal stuff, but for a much bigger, greater, more fulfilling, more satisfying purpose? And that bigger, greater, more satisfying purpose, you know what that is for you. Like I said, is it cats and dogs? Is it the animals? Is it the fish? Is it the, is it the environment? Is it cancer? Or is it, like with me, freeing kids out of the sex trade, like that just really gets your goat. So what if you said, okay, listen, for every $10 I make, I'm giving one to this, to this purpose, to these lives, or like building homes for the extreme poor who are living in plastic and cardboard and scrap metal, who are digging through a dump site every day. They're living at that dump site, trying to find food for their children. Man, this, this, this gets me out of bed. Is it the orphan, like Milton Hershey, that just because someone's been orphaned doesn't mean 
that they shouldn't have the same opportunity, if not better, than everybody else that is born to a family where both parents are there. So he created that environment for them. Isn't that amazing? So is it the orphan? Is it the elderly? Do you have a heart that something ticks and it makes you mad to hear where we have old elderly who are cold? Come on, winter's coming. It's coming right around the corner, and there are people that are going to be freezing. Could you imagine a sweet old grandmother, great-grandmother, freezing and shivering because she cannot afford to pay the propane bill in New York City? And her family has just forgotten about her. They've forgotten about her. Why? Because she can't cook for them anymore? Because her hands are riddled with, with arthritis, and she can't crochet and make them stuff anymore? She can't drive anymore. In fact, she might not even be able to see. So because they don't view her as useful anymore because she's not serving them anymore. They have, wow, forgotten her. So there she is, shivering all alone in her later years, her twilight years, basically waiting to die. Friend, what makes you tick? What's bigger? than what you're working for right now that it's time to reach for. And you might say, well, Danny, I, I don't know. Like, you know, there's so many like charities out there that are just disgusting, man. They're just using the old lady as a way for them to get rich or they're using the extreme poor as a way for them personally to get rich. They're using it to market the pain and that's happening in the world, but they're just making money for themselves. Yeah, man, you're right. And that is so disgusting to me. It makes me want to throw up. It's a personal passion of mine which is why we searched for organizations that we could support. We've done the homework. Kingsransom.org. If you go to that site right now, check it out. They've got just about whatever it is that makes you tick in lots of different nations. Is it Israel? You're hearing about all the bombs that are dropping over there? Kids that are like hiding out. In fact, 1,600 of them that have been hiding out for days where in a bomb shelter? Could you imagine being terrified? You're five years old. The sirens blow, missiles have been dropped, people trying to kill you. There you are, five years old, hiding in a, in a bomb shelter, away from your parents. So if there's a nation that is close and near and dear to your heart, like Africa, where there's a major famine and major shortage of water that's killing people because the water is so bad, go to kingsransom.org because you're going to find nations and purposes that if you want to be inspired, just as Milton Hershey and so many others, that they use a portion of their work life to give it, to help somebody else who does not have the ability, does not have the opportunity because of the nation they were born in or who they were born by or what they were born into or what challenges that have happened through life. So I promise you this, if you're lacking inspiration, just spend some time on that site and begin to see and read of the work that King's Ransom is doing. 100% of every dollar that goes to King's Ransom goes straight to the food for that orphan. In fact, King's Ransom can feed an orphan for an entire month for $7. The amount you spend on a large latte every day feeds an orphan for an entire month. $11, so what would that be? Your little muffin and your large latte gives water for life. Water for life, clean water for life for $11. Do you have $11 in a month that you could help somebody have water for life versus the water that was killing them or there was no water? You can't survive without water. And or, would you be willing to give up one latte a month? Yeah, you know you can. You know you can. To feed one orphan every month? For an entire month. Hello? Three squares for a whole month. Seven dollars. You, you must be going, how? Trust me, we got this dialed. Kingsransom.org. All the money that you give to King's Ransom, 100% of that. You send in $7, the $7 is buying the food for the kids. It's not paying for administrative costs. King's Ransom has a corporate sponsor that takes care of the administrative costs. 
So all your donations go straight to that food or that filtration system for that family or the bricks to build the houses for the extreme poor, not the administrative costs, or paying the propane bill for the older woman who's been left all alone. So go over there and you might find something that inspires you. I challenge you that if you want to do something great with your life, this is your next step. And if you're finding that, man, lack of motivation and lack of inspiration and lack of action and gosh, you feel dry, this could be it. Maybe that's where Milton Hershey was. Like, well, yeah, I got a business. Yeah, so what? He wanted children more than anything. So they couldn't have kids. So he adopted everybody else's kids basically and gave them a great life. Built an entire city just for them. That city is still alive to this day. And we're telling his story, and he's been dead for like 50 years. And I need to go buy a chocolate bar now. Anyway, thanks for joining us. Come on, take that next step. Get beyond just thinking about your own needs. If you make that commitment, $1 out of every 10, you're going to end up making more money than if you're just focused on your own personal stuff goals. But if you take it a step above and you ignite the part of you that was put on this planet, which was to care for others who cannot care for themselves, whew, you now are gonna be trusted with money in a whole new way. And you now will have a motivation in a whole new way. And you now will be able to be inspiring other people to do something in a whole new way. So I want you to write me. After you go to kingsransom.org, come on over to Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, even YouTube, and I want you to tell me, what is your success for? How has today's message affected you? What are you going to do with it? Don't be another person who's like, okay, I'm moving on to my next show. That was great, moving on. Dude, don't do that. That's how 98% of the population ends up broke at 65. It's really like, oh, that was good, and they don't take action. Take action, go to kingsransom.org. Spend five minutes, Just you got five minutes. Spend five minutes looking around. Read up on the things that they're doing freeing a thousand sex slaves, giving water to a million people, building a thousand homes for families, a thousand different families who've received homes, feeding 18,000 orphans. Come on, you can be a part of something powerful like that or go find something else you wanna do. But take five minutes, go over there, kingsransom.org. All right, that's it for me. Please share today's video. God bless, bye.